some seniority. Today is Carol Klingen Peel's birthday. Today! And I think we should sing to her. I think she should come up here and stand. No, we don't want to. How many of you love Carol Klingen Peel? Isn't she the sweetest thing? She is so sweet. Have a seat. She's sitting down. Have a seat. We'll sing to her. She's tired. She wants to sit down. All right, for Carol. Happy birthday. If you've got little kids, don't send them to Amy's class because we know everything. Those kids keep talking and they can't stop. And big kids, yeah, old, old kids. Did you tell Jean that I cut my finger? I was cutting the grass and the neighbor said like this, come over here. I went over, I said, you okay? What do you need? He goes, I heard you cut your finger real bad. So where'd you hear that? And he, it was someone Carol told. I tell you, be careful what you say. Because it gets around. So I showed him and he goes, oh, that doesn't look too bad. I said, you weren't there. You weren't trying to stop the blood for two hours. Mark 5. Mark chapter 5. Mark, familiar story. I'm sorry. Um, I'm, I've run out of sermons, so I preached this one 48 years ago. I'm going to re-preach it. No, I've, I've never preached this, but I love this, this portion. Three Gospels, Matthew, Mark, and Luke, deal with the story of the woman with the issue of blood, or whatever you want to call it. She had a problem that no one could take care of, and she finally decides, as you'll read, I hope, with me, that if she could just touch Jesus, she, I love, man, I think this story is great. I, I, I think that we so underestimate God. If I was God and you underestimated me like we underestimate him, I'd be mad. You've done this. Someone needs help. They didn't call you. You know what you said? Why didn't you call me? Right? They were hurting. They were stuck. They were this. They were that. And you said, ha, what? You know it. Why didn't you call me? It's going to be worse with God if we underestimate what He can do. If we're living on a lower level when we could be watching now, if we could be living on a higher level, but we can't do it without Him. We can only do it with Him. And I think if we underestimate what He can do, He's going to be upset. This story, I, I don't know why. I, you know what? I, I know why. It's the Holy Spirit. And maybe you don't like that spooky talk, but I believe in the Holy Spirit. And I really try. I mean, I'm so bad at it that I have to work extra hard 
to let the Holy Spirit control my life. And this whole thing about praying every day, I am pleading that the fruit of the Spirit will be present in my life. And I'm just trying to listen to the Holy Spirit. And I've got, you know, and it's the great thing is when you get my age, I'm much younger than Carol, but when you get my age, it's not an issue of what to preach. It's an issue of which one to preach. And so God really laid this, um, maybe, maybe, and again, maybe he did it just for me. I'm, I'm part of the church. Are I not? You say, well, it didn't speak to me. Well, maybe it spoke to somebody else. Maybe it spoke to me. Mark chapter 5. Let's start, can we? Verse 25. A certain woman which had an issue of blood 12 years and had suffered many things of many physicians and had spent all that she had and was nothing better but rather grew worse. Man, that's a depressing verse, isn't it? She tried everything, nothing worked. She's getting worse. Now what? Verse 26. I'm sorry. Verse 27. And when she had heard. Heard. See it? She didn't see anything. She heard. She heard. The, a lady came over there. I don't know if we were with someone. We had prayed. She came over and said, thank you for praying. Was it me? Was that us? Was that, did I pray that night because I'm loud? Is that what she heard? She probably heard. People hear. If they don't hear what you say, they hear how you live. I think it's unique that when she tried everything else, she went to them, she spent her money, now she hears about Jesus. When I got saved, I, he, I didn't see him. He didn't touch me. He didn't grab me. I just read the Scriptures. Faith cometh by hearing. Hearing by the Word of God. It says, look at it, verse 27. When she had heard of Jesus, came in the press behind and touched his garment. I'm not impressed. What? What? See, it says press. You know what that means? Everybody's pressed up against each other, it's crowded. So here's what we know. She wasn't the only one that touched him. But she's the only one that touched him with a purpose. Some of you go to church, I go to church, I don't get anything out of it. Because you don't have a purpose in it. So you're like that crowd, just going along with the crowd, and you're pressing on Jesus, and oh, Jesus is there, but you're not getting anything out of it because you don't have a purpose. She needed help. She had tried everything. She's broke. I know what broke is, and when you're broke, you're broken. You're depressed many times. You're in despair. You feel hopeless. Now what? Since so she came and touched him from behind. Verse 29, I love this. Uh, oh no, verse 28. And she said, for she said, if I may touch but his clothes, I shall be whole. Don't you think every doctor's visit she thought that? Don't you think every time they said, give me money, we'll fix you. We'll give you this, we'll try that. Don't you think every time that she went, she had hope? Boy, not like now. Because why? She heard. See, it makes a difference what you listen to. This world is depressing. 
Huh? I'm, I'm, I'm about, I rattle your cage. I don't care about your cage. I love Trump. I love him. I love him. I just don't know why everybody hates him, but nobody will give me a good reason. He's doing good. He's done more with a Christian than any other president. Got it. John chapter 3, verse 19 through 21. Men love darkness. I mean, we're just seeing that play out. I was going to explain that to some people. I had people say to me, um, um, hey, that statistic you gave about the mayor of South Bend and crime going up 40% when he came out as, as a homosexual, I said, that wasn't a coincidence. God's, God's in charge. God, God, righteousness exalteth a nation. But sin is a reproach to any people. She, we got to finish this story. She said, verse 28, if I may touch but his clothes. Not me. I want him to touch me. Hey, come on, come on. I want him to pray over me. Right? I want him to anoint me with oil. Touch his clothes, I'll be whole. What kind of wacky religion is that? It worked. Didn't it? Hey, verse 29, look at it. And straightway. That means immediately. Twelve years she waited to get well. She touches his, his uh, 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 I don't know if it was a Botany 500 or a Johnny Carson or a chap suit. But she touched his suit. She touched his coat, she touched his robe, she touched his clothes, and bam, she got well. Anybody watching them kids? Maybe they escaped. Thank you, Lynn. They escaped. Maybe the, finally, if my wife's down there, she might be tied up or something. Kids are normal. Just we'll, we'll get over it. They'll get over it. Thanks, Dad. Straightway the fountain, verse 29, straightway the fountain of her blood was dried up. She felt in her body that she was healed of that plague. And Jesus, watch this, verse 30, Jesus immediately knowing in himself that virtue had gone out of him, turned him about in the press and said, Who touched my clothes? Who touched my clothes? Verse 31. As I would say, his disciples said, Thou seest the multitude thronging thee, and sayest thou, Who touched me? He looked round about. Amy's brother Scott. Amy's oldest sister is Vicky, then Scott, then Amy's in the middle. He lives uh, in Maryland. By, does a lot of work in Baltimore. He does grass, man. But sod, not marijuana. He lays sod. And when he lays sod, he does golf courses. He did the uh, 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 Washington, D.C., where the main mall is. He did that. So we're not talking a pickup truck load. We're talking semis. He does medians down there. It's against the law in Maryland to have dirt. Because it'll wash, so everything has. That's why he probably went in the sod business, smart man. So he lays sod like you wouldn't believe. But he drives, and he, he, I, I know he made, he left a job. He was working on the space shuttle in California and left there to go to Maryland to get into this. So I know he's making money. Anyways, he drives this old junky van. And Scott and I were always in car, into cars. And when I would date Amy, I had that old 1960 red convertible. I'd come over and I'd go, Amy, ready? He'd go, no, let's go for a ride. <laughs> so we'd jump in the convertible and tool around and, and we'd get back and, and I'd say, would you check if Amy's ready? And he'd say, she's not ready. He would. And he'd say, let's wax it. 
So then we'd wax it. Anyway, so he's got this old junky van. It says Piney Creek, the name he lives on Piney Creek in Maryland. You could see uh, Gettysburg, the battlefield, from his, his window. He lives up on the hill. And anyways, he's got his old, and the name of his company is Piney Creek Sod. He's got his old junky van. I go, Scott, that van just drives me nuts. He goes in Baltimore, they don't hawk horns. They bump you. When it's time to go, they don't blow, it's quiet. But you feel the jar, because they bump you. He said, I'm not going to drive a nice vehicle, because they bump you. And he said, you're so close together, when they hit you, you hit the car in front of you. And it's just a big chain wreck, and everybody's used to it. I said, you got to be kidding me. Hey. That's kind of the logic here. The disciples are saying, what? Wait, we're all crowded. What, what do you mean? Who, who bumped me? God said, you don't get out and go, accident. You, they'll run you over if you try to get out and don't go. He said, they'll bump you. He said, people have gotten out and they keep bumping them. Don't move to Baltimore. <laughs> Verse 32, he looked around about to see her that had done this thing. But the woman fearing, verse 33, the woman fearing and trembling, knowing what was done in her, came and fell down before him and told him all the truth and said, he said unto her daughter, not you touching me made you whole. He said, thy faith, thy faith hath made thee whole. Go in peace, be whole of thy plague. I'm not done, but I need to pray. Father, speak to us. Use these moments. Help us to concentrate on nothing but you. And Holy Spirit, help us to hear nothing but you. I, of course, need help. Help me. Fill me. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. She tried everything, did she not? Everything. She tried it. Watch now. Watch. She tried everything but Jesus. Ever. Twelve years. She tried everything. Went everywhere. Spent her money. Now she makes her way through this crowd. There are people all over. She touches him because she believed that if she touched him, she believed because she heard, she believed if she touched him, she'd be well. She touched him. Listen to me. It was a miracle. It's too bad we don't use that word because we act like God can't do miracles anymore. But I've been reading this Bible and I'm pretty sure he's the same God. Say, are you being sarcastic? Very. I'm pretty sure he can do the same thing he's always done. I'm pretty sure that he loves you as much as he loves her. I'm pretty sure that he can do what we couldn't even imagine. So thank God that he still can perform miracles. Three things. Number one, we got to go. We got it. Number one, number one, she saw her problem. She saw her problem. A lot of people don't even admit they have a problem. I mean, you know, you, you know you're going to heaven, but you still may have a problem. Do you really feel like God's blessing your life? Do you really feel like God's in control of your life? That's a problem if he isn't. You say, why is that a problem? Because Jesus said, but seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. That's the problem. The problem is, if you're not disobedient to him, you're being disobedient. For 12 years, she wanted nothing but to be well. She spent everything she had trying to find a cure. She knew she was in trouble. And sometimes it, will take, it may take, maybe it took 12 years till she was willing to listen. Look at me, look at me. God knows right where to touch you. And he'll touch you there. I can't believe he, he would not love me and leave me alone. I, well, I've tried that on him. It doesn't work. The Bible says he loves you so much. Hey, He loves you so much, He touches you where you need it. Not where you like it, where you need it. And so, she, she 
knew. She saw her problem. Do you see what you need that only God can fix? Pastor, I've been praying about this. Do you see? Maybe you're the problem. Number two, I want to move quickly. Number two, she saw her problem. Number two, she was desperate. We're not desperate. Look at me. You, I, you know what? Honestly, I'm not trying. I'm going to be sassy, but I'm not trying. I don't care what you think. I, I don't care... I don't care if you quit coming. I don't care if you get the deacons to vote me out. I'm going to tell you the truth. And we don't live the Christian life like we should. We're not desperate about it. We're not desperate. We sing, rescue the perishing. Really? How many people did you witness to this week? Care for the dying. Snatch them from pity. Really? We're supposed to meditate in God's book night and day. You know when we do that? When we're desperate. I don't know why God's doing this to me. And you get real religious and real spiritual, which is good. But I tell you what you'll be, be more thankful for. If you get desperate now and God brings something into your life, you'll be ready for it. She was desperate. Nothing wrong with being dead. She didn't feel good and, and she had a problem that cut her off from people. She couldn't go to the temple. You know how it is when you're sick. When a guy's sick, end of the world. Right, women? End of the world. Gets a cold, I'm dying. And we think we'll never get well. We're well most of the time, but boy, let that sickness come in. <laughs> God is judging. Really? She's isolated. She's broke. But she sees her problem. She knew she needed a miracle. She thought about it and thought about it and thought about it and finally does something about it. She had to get to God. She had to believe that God could fix her. I'm still praying through Psalm 34. One of my lists when I pray in the morning is right from Psalm 34. And a couple of verses in that chapter go like this. Psalm 34 and verse 6 says, This poor man cried, and the Lord heard him, and saved him out of all his trouble. You know the problem with that verse? doesn't say how long you're supposed to cry. See, we're used to going, I cried, God, and God says, keep on. So man, I'm just crying over that verse, Psalm 34, verse 8. It says, oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. The rest of that verse says, blessed is the man that trusteth in Psalm 34, verse 17, The righteous cry, and the Lord heareth and delivereth them out of all their trouble. Verse 18, Psalm 34, The Lord is nigh, close, He's nigh unto them that are of a broken heart, and save it such as be of a contrite spirit. She saw her problem, she was desperate, number three. She went to Jesus, or she knew what to do. She knew where to go. I just call it, she went to Jesus. Hey, you know what? You could try all kinds of stuff, but I'm pretty sure Jesus can fix everything. When people come to me, I don't know what to do. I'm up against it, and, I don't, and I'm thinking... I have not seen, nor have ear heard, neither hath entered into the heart of man the things that God has prepared for them that love him. Jeremiah said, Call unto me, and I'll answer thee and show thee great and mighty things which thou knowest. 
We don't know anything about this woman. We don't know what she believed. We didn't know what she didn't believe. We didn't know how she was morally. But we do know one thing about her. She heard about Jesus. She heard what he could do. So she finds him. She goes to him. And she touches him. Who can't do that? Who can't do that? She didn't stay at home. Woe is me. She didn't make a list of pros and cons. Should I see him? Should I not see him? Should I trust him? Should I not trust him? Man, she heard. Listen to me. If you and I are going to see the Lord do miraculous things in our lives, we have to get to Him. Now watch me, I'm through. Think about this. She didn't want to talk to Him. What you want to talk to Jesus? What you pray that He would take two minutes to talk to you? You know what she said? I just want to touch Him. I know if I touch him, he'll make me well. You know what amazes me? She got it in her head. Watch this. This is so cool. She got it in her head that all she had to do was touch his clothes. Where'd she get that? Who told her that? Isn't it amazing? You may do something someone thinks is whack go. It's two words. But you listen to the Holy Spirit. Who told her to touch his clothes? She didn't need him to lay hands on her. He didn't need to say anything to her. Hey, he didn't need to anoint her with oil or spit on her as he did some so they could see, made clay, rubbed it in their eyes. Man, I would say, Lord, would you spit on me? Say, that's gross. Not if it's God spitting on you. Hey, not if it'll make you well. She just needed to touch his clothes. Listen to me. She just needed to touch his clothes. What faith? So she, she heard if she could just touch his clothes and move on, she would be well. Isn't that exactly what happened? She said, if I touch him, he'll, he'll solve a problem nobody else can solve. All I got to do is touch him. And if I touch him in this crowd, I know that even though others, she knew, she saw it. She was bumping people left and right. When she touches clothes, it says there, see the word? Straightway. Straightway, she was well. And she moved on. And then Jesus said, hey, who touched me? And she heard that. And now. I mean, even the disciples said, what do you mean who touched you? Everybody's bumping you. No, no, he said, no, no. See, a lot of us, watch me, watch me. A lot of us just want to bump Jesus. We just want to say, oh, yeah, I touched him. Yeah, but what happened to you after you touched him? I read my Bible, I don't get anything out of it. Maybe you're not touching him in faith. I get some out of it. It's not because I'm a preacher, it's because he's God. In fact, I'm one of the dumbest people I know. No, amen. Just be quiet, just listen. 
I'm one of the dumbest people I know. But I tell you what, when I open that book and the Holy Spirit of God's alive and He shows me something, I know it wasn't me. Verse 30. Jesus is amazed. He's amazed by her faith. He's not amazed what he did. He didn't say, wait a minute, you mean you touched my clothes and you're well? Shazam. That's Greek. He said, usually people don't touch me out of desperation and believe they'll be healed. Because he knew she touched him was well. Isn't that a cool story? Man. He told her, what my clothes? It's your faith. Yet we always want it to be the clothes. Huh? See the way the kids dress to them? It's all clothes. They're trying to get an identity. They think it's in how they look. We just need to get back. You know, somebody needs to stand up and thunder out. Be yourself. And they dress all alike, but they say, I'm trying to be myself. You look like everybody else. Your pants are falling down. Your hat's hurting. You're not the only one that does that. Everybody else is doing that. Well, I'm trying to be, you know, I'm old. She touched him. He never touched her. That's faith. I tell you myself, I wouldn't settle for that. I'd tackle him. I'd shove him over and sit on him and say, slap me or something. She said, if I can just touch his clothes. Man, I want that kind of faith. I want that kind of faith where I just believe that he can fix whatever I'm going through. Not his clothes, but him. It says, did you see it? She had heard, verse 27, she didn't hear about his clothes. You heard about him. The shroud of Turin. We think we found the shroud that wrapped Jesus in the tomb. No, you didn't. Be quiet. You're missing the point. He rose from the dead so we go to heaven. You're worried about the rag that were wrapped on him? Get a life. But that's typical Christianity. Get all caught up. Look what I got. Look what I did. Me first. I did this first. I knew it first. She just said, look, doesn't matter if he knows me. It doesn't matter if he said, I just, I, if I touch his clothes, I'll be well. And as soon as she touched him and let go, she was well and she moved on. You can come to this church. I'm going to, Make this personal and I'll stop. You come to this church and you can sing. You can sing in the choir. You can sing specials. You can sit there and hear singing and be blessed. And you can, you can hear the preaching and you can go home after all of that and never really be touched. Quit Bumping into Jesus. Touch him in faith. Be desperate. Be desperate. I don't know what else to do. I know what you should do. Quit bumping into him. I live right. I do this. I do that. I try this. I try that. 
see your problem, get desperate. Touch him. She didn't just walk through the crowd, excuse me. They didn't all move away for her. She didn't feel good. She shoved her way through the crowd, reached over, grabbed him, let go, and was well. Why? Because the Holy Spirit told her to do that. And she believed. You don't just come to that belief like this. She may have worked on that. God may have worked on her for 12 years. Why 12 years? Who cares? Don't focus on what you're going through. Focus on who can fix it. Your head bowed, your eyes closed. Dear Lord, there's so much to say. We need you to speak. We need you to show us how to have the faith like this woman had. Stories there, God. You put it in three Gospels. Must be important. Very few of the things that you've done are in three Gospels. You put it there in three Gospels, Matthew, Mark, and Luke. You put it there. And I could only pray for me. I, I pray that others would pray, but I can only pray for me that I, that I would have the faith that this woman had. She heard about you. She knew her problem it was a problem that she had to be desperate enough to touch you. Believing that you, just, just by her putting her faith in you, not that she could get to you, not that she could touch your clothes, but that you, who you are, who you are. I'm saved, Lord, not because I prayed a prayer. I'm saved because I had faith to believe that you could save me. And she had faith enough to believe you could heal her. And you told her, hey woman, called her daughter, daughter, your faith, your faith, you believe that you're well because you, you believed it. You believed in me. You heard about me, came to me, touched me and believed I could do it. And I, that's what made you, you remember that. Lord, help us to have that kind of faith. Before we go tonight, Lord, show us what you want. Show us what you want. Your head bowed. Your eyes closed. Say, preacher, I want to have that kind of faith. I, 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 I want my God who can do miracles. I want him to do miracles. Doesn't matter whether you're worthy or not. Do you want that? Here's my hand. Here's my hand. Here's my hand. I want that kind of faith. I want that kind of faith. Pray for me, preacher. I, more than me praying for you, you're saying, I, I believe that. I'm, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go, you need to just read that. You need to grab a hold of that story and just say, Lord, that, that's what I need. I want that, Lord. I want that. Your head bowed, your eyes closed. You say, I, haven't ra I didn't raise my hand a minute ago. Could I raise it now? Yeah, go ahead. Here's my hand, up and down, up and down. This is for you. Don't worry about me seeing it. This is for you. God sees it. This is, this is about you. This is about you. Father, I pray that we wouldn't just bump into Jesus. You know who Jesus is? Yeah. But that we would touch him in faith. Knowing that he can fix whatever we need. Thank you, Lord. We love you. We praise you. Thank you, God. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.